there is a local art museum uh, in the in the town that I live in in Ghent, Belgium, that doubles as a, a mental asylum, and uh, it's called the Gislaine Museum. Part of the therapy for the patients was to give them self-worth, some self-importance by incorporating art in their therapy, and then would have small exhibits that would invite the local community to come in and praise the work so that they could have a greater self-worth. That has evolved over the years into becoming a, a museum, um, a bit like uh, for, for the American uh, viewers of this program. Uh, maybe the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia would be a comparable comparison to, 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 to the Geese Lane. So a decade ago, I attended one of the exhibits and while looking at the artwork that they had on display, one piece really stood out to me was a, an image of a crucified nun with her breasts exposed and the devil was behind her with his legs wrapped around her throat strangling her. I thought that when I saw it that I read 1988, which would make sense, you know, I thought this must be like some kind of a local Slayer fan who made some artwork. And then I looked closer and I said, 1888. And then in my mind, I thought back to 1988 and I thought, well, in America where I grew up, we had the PMRC in 1988, which was a... Uh, the Parents Music Resource uh, Center or Council or whatever it was, which was a, um, a censoring group that would attack bands like Slayer and, and uh, the Dead Kennedys and Body Count and Danzig and, and bands of that nature for having um, controversial artwork. So in my mind, I couldn't imagine that a hundred years before that, someone was able to create something so blasphemic as artwork and it's still to be carried over into into this time frame uh, i found that to be mind-boggling so i started to research more about rops and uh he's from uh, namer and um then eventually he moved to to paris and lived a very decadent life maybe comparable to something like a desaad like a libertarian life he had um a relationship with two sisters who were uh, in the fashion industry, which also in the late 1800s was probably an uncommon, uh, even for French people, it was uncommon. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so that was what stemmed my, my interest in ROPS. And, um, you know, there's always these uh, hidden gems that you can find in, in anything in music and in art. Uh, and, and that was a... Uh, I always like to uncover these little un un unknown um, resources. Sometimes they just fall into my lap, and, 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 and in this case, Rops was one of those, and I, I really related to that. And in fact, I, I wrote an album uh, many years ago called The Blackest Curse, and a lot of the album's concept uh, was based around Rops. They didn't see him as like a full-on artist, right, in some ways? He did prints, so I guess that in a way he would be something like um, Shepard Fairey. Because they mentioned that he was at the at the front of like uh, the Belgian comic world, and it's always weird to me how that art form is getting less attention. Some of those drawings are are are, are just crazy technical. It's, it's always been weird to me that the, that doesn't feel like a full art form or something like that. Well, sometimes the art world likes to. Uh be conceited and see illustrators uh, in a different light than fine artists. And I think that might be the case with this. Also probably the content that he, he used was um, probably uh, frowned upon by most. With with the popularity of Warhol and printmaking being integrated with fine arts, only, only recently in the past couple of decades has that really been acceptable, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. 